Hi my friend, how are you? Welcome to Joystick and in this video of Joystick we are going to solve one of the most asked problems in interviews, the partition problem using dynamic programming technique. Let's see its problem statement right away. So you are given a set of integers. The integers are 3, 1, 1, 2, 2, 1 you need to find out if this set of integers can be divided into two subsets of integers such that the sum of integers in both the subsets is same all right so as you can see this is subset one where the integers are three one one and there we have subset two where the integers are two to one you can see that the sum is five in both the subsets all right so this is the equal sum partition problem statement okay now let's do a little bit of brainstorming before we start solving this problem now let me ask you one thing if you are given six pencils and i asked you to distribute those six pencils into two groups such that both the groups get equal number of pencils can you do that of course you can do that you can distribute three pencils to group one and three pencils to group two but if i ask you to distribute seven pencils into two groups such that each group gets equal number of pencils can you do that no you cannot one group will either get four and the other group will get three or one group will get five and the other group will get two all right so you can't do that now let's modify this problem a bit i am attaching a price tag to each of the pencils and i say that the cost of each pencil is one rupee now if i ask you to divide these six pencils into two groups such that the total cost of the pencils each group gets is same can you do that yes you can do that you can distribute three pencils group one will get the total cost as three and the other group will get the total cost as three but if i say that you do the same operation on seven pencils when uh, each of the pencils has a price tag of one rupee can you do that can you divide these seven pencils into two groups such that each group gets equal sum okay equal total cost of the pencils such that the total cost of the pencils belonging to each group is the same no you cannot do that okay so we have got one important clue here that clue is that the sum of the total number of integers has to be even if it is odd then the set cannot be divided into two subsets with equal sum it is false straight away so here in our case for this set of integers the sum is 10 all right and if we divide it by 2 we get 5 okay so this passes our first condition all right now the subset 1 will have the sum as 5 and the subset 2 will also have the sum as 5 i am opening the problem now okay one more thing that is very natural and this is the magic of math is that if I find a subset of integers that sum up to 5 all right then the remaining integers in the set will also sum to 5 so as you can see we have 2 to 1 okay or take this 2 to 1 if this sums to 5 then I am confident that the remaining integers which are 3 1 1 will also sum to 5 here are some more examples if you can see we have three integers 14 2 and 16 the sum is 32 sum by 2 is 16 if i get a few integers which sum up to 16 which is 14 and 2 in this case then 16 will already sum up to 16 and uh, uh, that is the same number of course but uh, I am sure that you have got my point here. Now here is another example. If we have 3, 1, 2, 2, the sum is 8. If I divide the sum by 2, I get 4. I get, uh, let's say, 3, 1 as uh, uh, one subset. Then I am confident that the, uh, that the remaining integers, uh, which are 2 and 2, will also sum up to 4. 
okay also this means that if a particular integer is belonging to one subset it cannot belong to the other subset and this thing is very close to the zero one knapsack problem here is another problem where the sum is 20 and it is even and when we divide it by 2 we get 10 but we do not get a subset of integers which sum up to 10 so in this case equal sum partition algorithm will return false this also means that we are trying to find a subset of integers from this set of integers which equals to a particular sum and that reminds me of the subset sum problem all right so what we are going to do we are going to solve it using subset sum problem however the sum here will actually be the sum of the integers divided by two okay so we have done enough brainstorming here let's switch to our framework where we are going to solve this problem if you are new to my channel and haven't subscribed to my channel yet then please hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon because that way you will get notified whenever i release videos like this in future let's switch to the framework now so here is our framework this is a matrix uh, which we are going to fill and we are going to get uh, either true or false here in the final cell you can see that our sum was 10 and sum divided by 2 was 5 all right so uh, these numbers from 0 to 5 are forming the columns and the integers of the set are forming the rows i have filled the 0th row and the 0th column over here to facilitate the algorithm i have already made a video on the subset problem solution using dynamic programming you can watch that i have explained everything in detail there now let's start filling this matrix we are going to start from here so 3 is greater than 1 hence in this case what i'm going to do i'm going to take this value over here so by common sense also it's going to be false this means that when we have the sum as 1 and we are given integer 3 can there be a subset can we form 1 using 3 no we can't all right so it's false over here 3 is also less than 2 hence this will be false all right so again if the sum is 2 and we are only given 3 then we cannot form 2 using 3 hence this is false okay now over here we have got 3 the sum is 3 so what we are going to do we are going to go step up and we will subtract this 3 from this 3 which will take us to here 0 here it is true so this true and we'll perform an OR operation with this value which is false so that will give us true so value here will be true now I'll tell you why we performed the OR operation here I'll tell you when we'll move to the subsequent rows but for now you can think that uh, when we are given the sum as 3 and the integer is also 3 then yes we can form a subset okay over here 3 is less than 4 so here also I can subtract 3 from 4 that will take me to this one here the value is false false or false is going to give me false so it is false all right here also 3 is less than 5 so 5 minus 3 will take me here on to false or false is going to give me false all right over here i have 1 and here also i have 1 so 1 is equal to 1 so what is going to happen i'm going to go one step up then i'm going to subtract 1 from 1 so that will take me to 0 here the value is true so true and false is going to give me true this also means that when we have 3 and 1 and we have the sum as 1 is there an integer or is there a subset of integers which can form 1 so yes we have 1 so that's why it is true over here 1 is less than 2 so what is going to happen I'm going to go up two sub, uh, 1 subtracted from 2 is going to take me here false or false is going to give me false now over here 1 is less than 3 so I am going to go up 1 subtracted from 3 is going to take me here so this is false 
but this is true so false or true is going to give me true now why i am considering this sub problem why i am considering this value so this is the value of an important sub problem what it means that if there is a sum 3 and there is only one integer given to us which is 3 then can this 3 be formed using this 3 yes it can be formed and that's why i have true over there even if i add 1 it doesn't make any difference because i have already got a subset which is forming 3 so this is one of the sub problems okay so we move here now here 1 is less than 4 all right now this sub problem indicates that if i don't include 1 and if I have a sum as 4 and only integer given to me is 3, can I form 4 with this 3? Okay. No, I cannot form. So even if I include 1, it is going to give me false only. But let's consider the other sub problem. So the other sub problem is I subtract 1 from 4. That is going to bring me here. Here the result of the sub problem is 2. That means we can form this 3 using this integer 3. Now adding 1 to this 3 is going to take me to 4. All right. So if this is true, okay, understand adding 1 to this value is also going to give me true. All right. And this is why we consider this sub problem. That is why we perform an OR operation on this sub problem as well as this sub problem. So now the value here is going to be true. One is less than five. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go one step back. So this is false, this is false. So this is going to give me false. Now let's come over here. One is equal to one. So I'm going to go one step back. I get true, this is true. So this is going to give me true. Now over here, one is less than two. So, two, uh, 1 subtracted from 2 is going to bring me here. Here the value is true. Uh, perform OR operation with this false. I am going to get true over here. Here, 1 is less than 3. I subtract 1 from 3. I get over here. False or true is going to give me true. Okay, here 1 is less than 4. 1 subtracted from 4 is going to give me true true or true is going to give me true here also 5 subtracted 1 subtracted by 5 is going to give me true now this true all right performing or operation with this false now this true performing or operation with this false is going to give me true okay over here okay now this two is not greater than this one so I'm going to simply take this value, which is true. Okay. This two is equivalent to this two. So two subtracted from two is going to give me two. Two subtracted from two is going to give me true. True or true is true. Now, true, uh, two is less than three. Two subtracted from three is going to take me here. It is true uh, or true. This is also going to give me. Now check here. 2 is less than 4. So 2 subtracted from 4 is going to take me here. So true or true, it is going to give me true again. Now 2 subtracted from 5 is going to take me here. And this true, this true is going to give me true. Similarly, let's fill these cells quickly. So 2 is greater than 1. This is going to be true. And this is also going to be true. This is also going to be true. 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 All are true. So it's going to be true. Then uh, this is going to be true. Also true. Also true. Also true. Also true. Now, so we have got our final answer, which is true. That means we have got certain integers from this set, a subset of integers, okay, which is equal to five, which is our sum by two. Hence, this proves 
that this particular set of integers can be divided into two subsets such that the sum total of each of the subsets is equal to the sum total of the other subset all right let's take a look at the algorithm now so here is the algorithm of the subset sum problem which is if j is less than s i minus 1 then m i j is equal to m i minus 1 j that means the value of the cell at the top else m i j is going to be the or operation of m i minus 1 j that means the cell at the top or m i minus 1 j minus s i minus 1 so this is the cell which you go to when you subtract the integer from the sum the time complexity of this dynamic programming solution is O sum into N. So th with this, we have solved the partition problem using dynamic programming. I recommend you to practice this problem on your own a couple of times. If you have any doubts, put those doubts in the comment section. I look so much forward to help you with programming and algorithms. Do give this video a thumbs up. That is extremely necessary. And only for this video, goodbye.